is Ireland. 32 green counties saying, Cade me la Fulcha, a hundred thousand welcomes. The government of Northern Ireland administers six of the counties. The other 26 are in the Republic of Ireland. There's beautiful wild Donegal and Killarney with its lakes and there's Galway and Limerick and Kerry and Derry and none of them at all is a long way from Tipperary. Green and silent, that's the way you find the countryside, just as it was when the Gales lived here with their long fair hair and breastplates of iron. 1,500 years ago, when St. Patrick came to teach the Gales to be Christians, this was just the way he found things, green and silent. Green in the country and green in the city. Green wherever you look. But the silence, we left that out yonder with the gorse and the heather. When you fly across the Atlantic, Ireland is your first sight of Europe. Now you're over Dublin, our capital. The Gales had a settlement here on the River Liffey back in the Christian era, and who knows how long before. When Viking raiders took over the town in the 9th century, it began to grow. Today, Dublin has three racetracks, 27 golf clubs, 166 churches, and some of the world's great theatres. Trinity College goes all the way back to 1591. That's when it was founded by the first Queen Elizabeth. Its library holds a vast collection of books and manuscripts, ancient and modern. In the days of St. Patrick, Ireland became a great centre of Latin learning. Monks spent their whole lives doing the painting in these Bibles. Some call the Book of Kells the most beautiful book in the world. And here is this oldest of all Irish harps, made 800 years ago. The Irish have always been good at making music. And here's something else they know how to make. Whiskey has been distilled in Ireland since 1757. Some say they invented it. In Gaelic, it's called the water of life. Irish beer is called stout. It is dark and strong. It's made in Europe's largest brewery, which exports more than any other brewery in the world. Of course, there's a drop or two left that's not exported. Some of that turns up in the pubs. There are 700 pubs in Dublin, one for every thousand inhabitants. Plenty of room for everybody to relax and bend an elbow and talk for the Irish are great talkers. In the pub, conversation is the salt of life and living, and a man lights a new story from the one that went before. Ah, if talk were cloth, he'd have the makings of an overcoat. According to statistics, an Irishman is a rare creature, no other country in Europe has so few people, just four million altogether. But ah, what individuals you find. This man will help you park if you want to stop here. It's the Bank of Ireland now. 200 years ago, it was the House of Parliament.
you call back Dublin's most glorious days when you drive along the north shore of the River Liffey. The Custom House dates from the 1780s. So does the Four Courts, the seat of our High Court of Justice. St. Patrick's Cathedral, founded in 1190 in honor of Ireland's patron saint. Jonathan Swift, who wrote Gulliver's Travels, was once the minister in this cathedral. The man who lived here was a poet, a dramatist, and a wit that few could match. Oscar Fingal O'Flaherty Wills Wilde. In this house, George Bernard Shaw, who wrote Pygmalion, was born. Later, Pygmalion came to America as My Fair Lady. Here, where the houses come down to meet Dublin Bay, another great writer used to stroll, novelist James Joyce. He lived here in the old stone Martello Tower. Now, it's a museum with a collection of Joyce's belongings. The dark hills and little lakes of County Sligo are woven all through the poetry of William Butler Yeats. In the shadow of Ben Bulban, where he dreamed in his youth, is the village of Drumcliff, population 300. Drumcliff's tree-lined churchyard always seemed to Yeats the most peaceful place in the world, and it was there that he chose to be buried. His only monument is a slab of native limestone with a line of his poetry carved on it. The 35th President of the United States was Ireland's most famous grandson. His great-grandfather was born in this cottage in Dungonstown, near New Ross, County Wexford. The monastery at Clonmac Noise is a ruin now. Once it was a busy city in itself. A devout city with a hundred crosses, the minstrels call it. Under the crosses, the old kings of Ireland are buried. Here, on the rock of Cashel, the great King Angus was baptized by St. Patrick himself. And it was here also that Brian Boru was crowned. He won a great victory over the Vikings in 1014. After the Vikings, the Normans landed on the Irish coast and fought their way inland. This was the first of a multitude of castle fortresses they built. After the Normans, the Anglo-Saxons invaded and 700 years of struggle between Irish and English began. The Irish built Blarney Castle with walls 18 feet thick as a stronghold in that struggle. People come here today to kiss the Blarney stone and have the gift of the gab forever. Now, isn't that worth a crick in the back? Even lords must make a living, and some Irish castles are hotels today. At Bonratty Castle, you can sit at an earl's table and eat stuffed boar's head in authentic medieval style. Your toast in honey wine might be slaunching a joe, your health forever. There are 40,000 forts and castles scattered across Ireland. Ashford Castle is a sportsman's favourite because of the brown trout in Lake Corrib nearby and the game birds in its woodlands and the salmon in its rivers. On the shores of these lakes and in the hinterland of the rivers, the archaeologists have discovered wonderful treasures of pottery and jewellery and weapons once used by prehistoric men. And this is the sovereign view of the islands of Loch Lean, which you command from the ancient tower of Ross Castle. From here, it's just five miles to Killarney Town. And with a horse like this, you can make it in two. That is, of course, unless you're held up by rush hour traffic like this. Ah, well, 
what's the hurry? When time was made, they say in Kerry, there was plenty of it to go around. Ireland is only 300 miles long as the crow flies, but it has 2,000 miles of coastline because of the many bays and inlets and coves. The Gulf Stream washes the southwest corner of the island so the climate is mild and the flowers subtropical. This town is Glen Gareth, at the head of Bantry Bay. In the north, the coast turns wild and rocky. According to legend, the giant's causeway was made by the giant Finn McCool. According to geologists, cooling lava had more to do with it. Connemara is Ireland's Wild West. Imagine the surprise of the inhabitants of these lonely cottages on the day when the first plane ever to fly across the Atlantic Ocean landed here in 1919. This is a monument to the pilots. The main city of the west coast is Galway. Its church of St. Nicholas dates from 1320. Christopher Columbus once came to pray in it. In 1493, Galway's Mayor Lynch condemned his own son to death for the murder of a Spanish guest. And when no one would carry out the sentence, he hanged the youth himself so that the law might be fulfilled. Some say that's where the term Lynch law came from. A dozen kinds of seabirds swirl around the cliffs of Moor, which rise 700 feet sheer from the ocean on the coast of Clare. Lobster men in little boats made of wooden slats and canvas ride the waves of the open ocean, rugged and independent, but how warm their hearts. For there are no strangers here, only friends you haven't met yet. Ourselves, we call it the island of short grass and long friendship, where the rain comes down only when God sends it, and you can feel peace dropping slowly on the land with the sunset. Heaven's reflection, we sometimes call it. Yes, this is Ireland. Yeah.